Now, if we have a piece of metal here and we run a weld bead on it, the bead will be up on the top and it will go down into the other metal. It'll melt a certain amount and that's your penetration. Now, it's pretty common for people to think of this. If we melt it just a little bit, we have weak penetration or shallow penetration. Um, that's a matter of how much it mixes and there's there's also the fact when it's shallow, not just a matter of the direct amount of mixing between the two metals, but that also indicates that your weld had a much higher temperature than the rest of your part when, it, when the weld was actually starting to cool. And so it will pull and shrink and cause more stress right at that point. So it's not just the fact that it's shallow. A shallow penetration is just it's a weak connection period on multiple points um, now to get a, a more of a penetration of course you can heat up your part is one of the things you can do you turn up your amperage you turn up your uh, put a uh, use straight polarity if you're running stick um, but that's not the main part of what I'm interested in discussing today that's part of it is your penetration but the thing is, we get to ignoring and forgetting we have two pieces of plate that we're putting together. Plate and plate. And some people do this early on, but, but a little ways into it, you learn that this is bad. And so we have here, and we get some penetration, and we weld the two, but you don't get them fully welded because it's only going to weld the two together the amount that you have penetration with just a straight butt weld. One of the things you will do to help that is you will gap them and this is a common procedure and sometimes you'll have a backup sometimes not so now since you have more space between them your weld's going to go down in there and you come closer to getting a full penetration weld what is the common one you will do and sometimes you'll double bevel them and we'll just show this with a single bevel and you bevel it now when you're beveling it you still have to concern yourself with penetration because still if this is just barely penetrated here you still don't have the weld hooked but you don't have to worry about the connection of any of this in here is all fill so this is fill and this is penetration your weld overall is a combination of both of these two if we were doing a double uh, angle on the end here we'd have it something like that and then we'd have the other piece coming in like this and depending we might have a gap between them we might have them touch and try to use enough penetration to fill in and we would have a full penetration weld hopefully with deep enough penetration on these so that it still hooks now I had a learning curve on that and this is where this is the real world part of it that's some general because when you first start in welding they hammer on you penetration 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 and they say you need a good weld uh, joint design somehow it didn't totally click with me so um, here is and it may not it may click with everybody other than me maybe I was the only dumb box of rocks that day but I had a adapter I was making so and I didn't have any super thick plate and I needed a boss sticking out here so I took a piece of round stock and I took this this was a adapter I was making for a 420 new process Dodge transmission for a slant six to fit in my 1947 Willys pickup which that one never did get fit, finished. The adapter got finished. It was beautiful. It was actually my college graduation uh, demonstration that I could do machine work. Made a, made a custom main shaft for it and all kinds of stuff. And I gave that to a friend. It's probably sitting in his collection of stuff today. I don't think he ever, but he had willies and he had slant six and he actually had an automotive machine shop too. So uh, I haven't talked to him if he still has it or not. Either way, anyway, so me being told all this time about penetration, penetration in here is just fine. I took this and 
I didn't feel competent to weld that. I was uh, had been through the welding at the college, but it you know I I didn't have years of welding, and I wanted to take the guys that were welding students to do it for me. So I had them. They <clears throat> went over and they ran a hot inner shield pass in here, three passes actually. They welded this in, you know. So I am relying that this is what I'm doing in my mind, I'm relying that it's going to penetrate back here into the base metal. Because what I came back and did was I machined all of this out and that out to the square corner that I wanted it to be. And once I machined those back out, I saw the crack in there. Obviously, because there was no weld filled in. It was just coming back to the penetration. It was all you had trying to hold this together. It didn't fall off. And I went over to the guys in the welding department and said, hey, you guys didn't get any penetration. And they're like, well, you didn't leave any place for the weld. This is dumb. You turned out all of our weld. And I just hadn't really thought about it before. Now, this was a long time ago, but ever since then, I definitely think of it. Um, so the way you would do this is you would come in here and you would make a bevel on that part. And you would make a bevel on this part. And then when you came in here, you would have your penetration into those and you would fill this all in and you'd machine it out and the weld would have a place to still live. Your weld would be in there when you're all done. And that's something also that I wanted to mention is this here, along with beveling it, it also does aid a little bit for strength because you have more surface area for that penetration to work over. Where when you're just straight up and down, your area that the penetration into your weld is shorter. You don't have as much length for the two to connect. Now, years later, I got a better understanding of what penetration was. We did, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something to this effect. Uh, I'm gonna call this a one and a half inch plate. And we had another piece up here that was a saddle for a bending fixture. And it would have looked like that. And we ran, which on the side, be like that. And the U plate like this. And we put bunches of beads in here. I did, actually. I put those in there. Bunches of beads with short arc. And short arc is normally good for thin metal all the way up to quarter inch thick. So I had pretty much zero penetration, two big ass beads off the side. I put the piece that we were pressing in here, pushed this down, the little bit of difference in this caused it to spring a little bit. And I had two very pretty beads of material that boom, came flying off of both sides. That really brought it home what was penetration. Since that second event, I've had it in my mind to the joint is dependent on both fill which is where the weld has somewhere to live whenever you're done with your planning. And whether it's this plate here, a place you're going to machine out, there's fill and penetration. Both of those are part of your weld. You have to have both for it to stick together.